A maiden national win for Richard Carolyn in a special vehicle category triumph for the Carolyn brothers. A crushing win for Arthur Reinecker and Robin Houghton in the production vehicle category. Springbok Errol Dalton maintains his run of impressive form this season. And Vickers van Dieventer totally dominates the opposition in the quad racer category. Toyota proudly presents highlights of the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, one of the toughest off-road events in the world. The South African Off-Road Championship took on an international flavour earlier this month, with the fourth round of the series moving to Botswana for the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. Always a highlight of the off-road season, the Toyota 1000 Desert Race has its roots in Botswana. After a break of several years with the event run in the Freiburg area, the Desert Race returned to Botswana for the third successive year. Marius and Margie Bowrain led the Special Vehicle Championship. They held a six-point lead over the father and son team of Franz Chepek, with the Solwolf brothers, Herman and Karl Heinz, maintaining a family theme at the top of the leaderboard. The Desert Race is a tough event and is more often than not won in the workshop. Oh, it's an 80-90% of your preparation and um, a bit of luck as well. The Video Sport SVM Land Rover pair of Cliff Barker and Mike Redden led the production vehicle category prior to the Desert Race. Right behind them were arch-rival Arpi Reinecke and the Bankfin Toyota Land Cruiser, who is now partnered by Robin Houghton. We're going to try our best. We, we, we won the roof last year, which was the other major event, and we would like to win the, the, the Desert Race. Um, we've got a new engine, so we're going to take it easy for the, at least the first half of tomorrow, and then we'll see how it goes. On the motorcycle front, 200 class leader Richard Manning, who was away on his honeymoon, opened up the way for Alex Valls, Clayton Enslin and company to make a move up the championship ladder. So your bike preparation must be very good for the same. And um, uh, besides that, just make sure you're fit and mentally ready for a ride that's going to take a long time, especially over 500 k's. And uh, just hope for the best and hopefully you don't have any problems with the bike and you just fit. After a maiden national championship win on the Bell Sugar Bell 400, 250 class leader Darrell Curtis was one of the favourites for overall and class honours. On the tactical front, Curtis had it all worked out. I think mean, you've definitely got to pace yourself. Uh, you can't just go flat out on the first day. You can break your machine, you can fall off. Um, it's better just to take it easy on the first day and the real race is on the second day. Rian van Eekirk led the 500 class championship, but Springbok Errol Dalton, now recovered from a serious shoulder injury, was also among the pre-race favourites for overall honours. I injured myself a couple of months ago in the suit and I haven't been doing much training, I've just been riding at all, riding and I'm not 100% fit, but I still am very confident and finding the route out there is going to be a problem, you know, I had, I had a problem in my time trial now and tomorrow be a problem. I don't think I've done too well in the time trial, but I'm happy with that. I'd like to start first or in the first 10. I'll be happy and I'll just pick the guys off as I go along. That's what I plan to do. Only 10 points separated the top six in the Quad Racer Championship. This opened the way for a tremendous battle and again underlined the importance of conserving machinery on the desert race. It's very, very important. You have to be used to uh, your motorbike. You have to know what it's going to do in certain situations and you have to know what might break and what might not break so you must save it as long as you can the toyota 1000 kicked off with a short time trial to determine start positions for racing section one the following day apart from determining start positions the time trial offers competitors a quick look at the sort of conditions they can expect along the route Time elapsed on the trial is added to overall race times and can be a double-edged sword. Running into problems on the time trial puts early pressure on crews who have to make up for lost ground when the real racing starts. As for the conditions, well, the time trial only confirmed what everyone knew. There was going to be dust and plenty of it. Thorn trees and thorn bushes would be the other dominant feature of the Botswana landscape. With a thousand kilometres of tough racing ahead of them over the next two days, most crews are content to take it easy on time trials. 
Toyota 1000 has never won on the first afternoon, and while a good start position can be an early psychological boost, it's not a critical factor. With most of the top crews simply going through the motions, the time trial produced little in the way of fireworks. There are, of course, exceptions to the rule, and local pair JJ Volmarans and Steve Cooper in a race coat got themselves into a bit of a tangle. It only goes to show that local knowledge is not always a major advantage. Arthur Abraham in the Video Sport SVM Range Rover was attempting his first desert race, with navigator Stratford Furcht hoping for his first finish in 11 starts. The donga that gave Volmorantz and Cooper a few problems almost claimed Marius and Margie Bowrain, while the fancied pair of Cassie Kutsir and Richard Leake in the Castrol Toyota Hilux ran into a serious gearbox problem that cost them plenty of time. Nick Harper and Richard Hill in the Pro-M Rock Oil Race Co. were another crew to run into problems on the time trial. They were not alone, with R.P. Reinecker and Robin Houghton in the Bangfin Toyota Land Cruiser dropping back after a series of punctures. The biggest casualties of the day were former South African champions Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne in the Mototech race code. The awesome truck, imported from the United States, developed a gearbox problem that brought an early end to their race. Reigning production vehicle champions Cliff Barker and Mike Redden in the video sport SVM Land Rover took it easy to finish out of the top ten, and at the end of the day it was the Carolyn brothers, Richard and Bucks, who set the fastest time in the single-seater lubrication equipment race co they were to share over the next two days. Special vehicles dominated the time trial, with the Sani Motorsport Nissan of Neil Woolrich and Paul Vermark the only production vehicle in the top ten. The quad racer brigade are a breed apart when it comes to off-road racing, these motorised bucking Broncos provide for fast and spectacular racing, and it takes enormous strength and skill to stay aboard in the sort of conditions these fellows encounter. Enjoying national championship status for the second year, the quads are now part and parcel of the off-road scene. Life in the world of off-road racing can also be a bit tough for the two-wheelers. Apart from manhandling machinery at speed through rough terrain, navigation is always a problem for off-road bikers. Both the bikers and quad racers rely heavily on distinctive and accurate route marking from the organisers. On the motorcycle front, the three national championship events run prior to the desert race produced three different winners. The injured Yuri Human won the Rustenberg 400, Errol Dalton took the Barberspun 500, and Daryl Curtis scored his maiden national championship win in the Sugarbelt 400. A new name was also destined for the Desert Race Trophy. After three successive victories, Alfie Cox is currently campaigning overseas, and his absence has thrown off-road motorcycle racing wide open. For a number of seasons, Cox and fellow Springbok Jeremy Davies dominated the off-road scene, and when the pair were around, the rest of the field was more often than not fighting over the scraps. Motorcycles in South African off-road racing are split into three classes based on engine capacity. The smallest class caters for machines up to 200 cc's, with the motorcycles light and manoeuvrable. The next class is for machines with an engine capacity of between 200 and 250 cc's, and, in terms of numbers, is the most popular category in off-road racing. The Big Banger class is for motorcycles of up to 500 cc's, with the desert race an event that favours the bigger capacity machines. The quad races are also split into two classes, depending on the degree of modification carried out on the vehicle. With national championship status a boost over the last two seasons, the quad category is rapidly growing in popularity, with ever-increasing fields making for close and spectacular racing. As was the case with the car categories, there were no real fireworks from the motorcyclists and the quad racers when it came to the time trial. Most of the competitors were content to take it easy, conserve energy and machinery, and generally get a feel for what was going to be a long and arduous race. Kevin Fisher set the fastest time of the day, followed by Graham McLaughlin, Gavin Nimmo, Brian Bunterquinnung, and pre-race favourite Daryl Curtis. The one big name missing from the top ten was Errol Dalton, who set the 19th fastest time. As was expected, Western Transvaal, Vickers van Dieventer, set the fastest time in the quad category. Van Dieventer was almost a minute quicker than Billy Kutzier, and was followed home by Francois Smith and the Breckel brothers.
The time trial claimed a big fish when Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne were sidelined with the Mototech Raceco running into a gearbox problem that could not be cured overnight. Very, very disappointing. The car just feels so good. Uh, really was ideal for the conditions. Even in the tight stuff, uh, the car was working very, very well. But uh, I don't know, the gearbox... Um, I noticed it was overheating a bit, but I didn't think that that is a major problem because we're in very tight stuff. And then all of a sudden we, we, we overshot very slightly, selected reverse, no reverse gear. So eventually we managed to push the car backwards and uh, got first gear, so we thought let's carry on. And then the, the, the problem occurred between second and third gear where I changed from second to third and that's an automatic gearbox. And it would select third, but then it would go back into second, which uh, obviously uh, Something in the valving has gone wrong. It cannot be repaired. So we're going to have a weekend supporting our other friend and uh, making the best of what started out badly. And I'm sure we'll enjoy ourselves. It's still flood racing.